Do you guys like the new bedding? I got it for my birthday. It's nice. And look, boxes on the pillowcases. So cute. Hello, if you're new, my name is Samantha and I've had this video to do on my list for a while now. It's gonna be all about hormone therapy. Just so you guys know, I have breast cancer, so this video is mainly gonna be about hormone therapy for breast cancer, though it can apply to other types of cancer. This video is gonna be broken up into three big sections. What is hormone therapy? What are the types of hormone therapy I take? and what are the side effects. I'm gonna to try to use the special chapters feature in this video, so if you care only about one part, you can like click in the video to that part. I think that's how it works. Okay, so what is hormone therapy? The short answer to this question is that it is medication used to control your hormones. My breast cancer was ER and PR receptor positive, which means that it fed off of estrogen and progesterone. Cute, you're making too much noise. A lot of people's breast cancer isn't hormone receptor positive, so they don't take hormone therapy. That's why some people get their treatment done and then they're done and then that's pretty much all they've got to do. But a lot of people with hormone positive cancer um, do hormone therapy after they finish treatment just because if you deprive your body of those hormones, it decreases your chance of that type of cancer coming back. And if your cancer didn't feed off of hormones, getting rid of those hormones isn't really gonna help you. Why don't you go see Gray? Yeah, come here, Q. So for the people that do have hormone positive breast cancer, these types of medications are supposed to greatly improve your survival, but um, they do come with a lot of side effects, which I will get to later in this video. So there's lots of different types of hormone therapy and you can be recommended for those different types based off of a lot of different factors and I'm not gonna really get into those because I don't really know them very well because I'm not a doctor. So you should ask your doctor if you think that you are eligible for these types of medications and they can help you figure out what a type is the best for you and your individual situation. In general, I think age can impact it. Um, if you're like pre-menopausal or if you're post-menopausal, the different details about your cancer can affect it. And um, also just how your body reacts to certain medications. Like if you try one and you have a ton of awful side effects, a lot of times you can try switching to a different one and it helps. So what medication do I take? This is kind of a loaded question. Um, the biggest hormone therapy medication that I take is letrozole. It's this tiny little pill. Um, I have some right here. Jeez. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry. Very small. And I take it every single night. Um, I think a lot of people take it in the morning because it can cause insomnia, but I don't have a problem with that. And I take my other medication at night, so I just take it at night. That pill mainly just decreases my estrogen. I am also on Zolodex. Zolodex is a shot that I get every 28 days that is to shut down my ovaries. Kind of a terrifying shot because it's not just like a needle. Um, it goes into your stomach and it's kind of like this little open thing and it injects like a pill into your stomach. Um, so it's kind of just like a big thing that gets jabbed in there, so it's a little scary. Sometimes I get bruised after it and stuff, so it's a little bit annoying. Basically since I am pre-menopausal, my ovaries want to keep working like normal. And just taking letrozole doesn't stop that process from happening, so I have to have something else that helps get my body into a medical menopause state. Another thing is that I'm taking ribocyclib. This is sort of off topic because it's not like exactly a hormone therapy medication. It's a targeted therapy medication, but I wanted to mention it because sometimes it's a little bit hard for me to figure out which side effects are from my hormone therapy and which side effects are from my targeted therapy. If you wanna know more about that, I'm going to be making a separate video on targeted therapy. Okay, so what are the side effects of hormone therapy? There's a lot of them, and I don't experience every single side effect, so I went on to Instagram and I asked people what types of side effects they get from hormone therapy, and I have pulled like the top responses and like the most common ones and put them in order here 
so that you can see what most people experience. Some people have tons of side effects. Some people don't really have any side effects. Something that I've noticed is younger women, it seems like, because I don't know the research on this, it seems like younger women have more of a problem with this because their bodies aren't really used to being in this state of not having all these hormones. So when you just tell their bodies to just stop doing that, it obviously is gonna cause some problems. So when I asked everyone their side effects, there were two side effects that were like above all others in the number of responses. And the first one was hot flashes because they suck and they are the worst thing. Um, if you don't know what a hot flash is, a lot of people experience them as they're going into menopause. And then once they get into menopause, it stops a lot of the time. Um, but when you're doing hormone therapy and you're doing Zoladex shots and you're like ovaries keep wanting to work but you're like constantly suppressing them, it's gonna cause hot flashes. I don't really know exactly how this works, but it causes your body to get really hot and it causes you to sweat because your body's like trying to cool itself down. It's miserable because you're just sitting there perfectly normal and then all of a sudden you get really hot and it sucks. I've been dealing with hot flashes for a little over two years now, so I'm going to make a separate video on that because I have some tips on how to help them. The number two most common side effect that was way above the others, um, not above hot flashes, but above the others, was joint pain. This was something that I really noticed right when I started taking the medication. Whenever I go on a major hike or anything and I'm like doing something where I'm not on fl a flat surface, I can really start to notice it then. Um, but when I'm just like walking around normally, I don't notice it as much anymore. Pretty much everyone notices some sort of joint pain um, that comes with it because uh, these medications are like that hard on your bones and your joints. These next two were the next highest. They actually tied night sweats, which goes hand in hand with hot flashes because if you're having hot flashes and you're sleeping, you're gonna probably sweat in your sleep and a lot of people won't wake up when they have a hot flash so they just are like drenched in sweat or they'll wake up because they're drenched in sweat. I tend to wake up whenever I have a hot flash so instead of being drenched in sweat I just wake up every single hour of the night. So you can pick which one's worse. Um, they both suck. <laughs> And the other one that tied was irritability. I don't know if that is a side effect for me. I can definitely tell you that having to deal with hot flashes and having to deal with joint pain is very annoying. And so having a higher irritability makes sense because you're just so annoyed with everything. And then another thing that people complained about was depression and decreased mood. These medications can have a big effect on your mood. Clearly, it can make you more angry. It can make you depressed. I'm sure it does some other things too, depending on the person. And if you think about it, it really just makes sense because if you're dealing with all these side effects, it's going to be annoying. It's going to make you angry. It's gonna make you sad. To me, that's not, that's not surprising. So the next one is no energy or fatigue. I was actually surprised that this one was not higher on the list because that's like one of the main things that I complain about. Now I know that I feel worse and more fatigued when I'm on my um, ribocyclib, but I definitely have noticed that just by taking the letrozole and the other medications that I am more fatigued. A lot of people say that exercise helps this. I think that exercise helps in that you are forcing yourself to do something so you can't just immediately fall down and fall asleep. Does it actually solve the problem? I'm not convinced, um, but a lot of people say that it does. So it could, it could work better for you than it does for me. <laughs> Another one that people say is dizziness and nausea. I know that I mainly have nausea from my targeted therapy but I do notice dizziness a lot with just the hormone therapy stuff. And I do sometimes have nausea, though it's nowhere near the amount of nausea that I feel on my targeted therapy. Um, but I do know that some people complain of nausea just on the hormone therapy. 
And yeah, this one's, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. Everyone knows what nausea is. <laughs> Another one that people said a lot was lower sex drive. Now, I can't comment on this too much just because I didn't have sex before I started hormone therapy. So I've only ever known sex during hormone therapy. Um, so I can't comment too much on this one if that's something that affects me. I would assume that it is um, just because if you're feeling no energy, if you are feeling nauseous, if you are irritable, depressed, your sex drive is going to be lower. Now I'm having a hot flash because I've been sitting here for like 25 minutes. Another one that people complain about a lot is insomnia. This is one that I can actually say that I don't think I deal with really at all. I'm taking so many medications that just make me tired. This one is very obnoxious for people that deal with it just because when you have insomnia but then you also have fatigue, you can't sleep at night. That makes you even more tired than you would be. Another one that I see people talk about a lot is brain fog and forgetfulness. This is something that people deal with on like pretty much all cancer medications. You hear the term chemo brain a lot because when people are on chemotherapy, they just can't think as well as they normally can. I'm not sure if I really experience this one too much. What I do notice about myself is I can't focus as well. Maybe that does go kind of hand in hand with brain fog and forgetfulness. Um, my productivity is definitely decreased. Another side effect is people feel achy and they have bone aches. This was another thing that I was dealing with probably about a year ago. I used to like be in the middle of the night trying to sleep and my bones would just hurt in my legs. I had a bone scan a little while ago. It said that I had osteopenia, which is not quite osteoporosis, but is on the way to that. And that's just because of all these medications. I feel like bone pain is some of the worst pain that you can get. So depending on the, your, the severity of that, some people say Claritin helps bone pain. Um, I didn't really notice that. I don't feel like Advil really helps it. Bone pain is it's actually the worst. Weight gain. Weight gain or like inability to lose weight. A lot of people gain weight when they're on chemo just because of all of the steroids that you are taking to try to get your body through and then when they start hormone therapy they can't lose the weight. I've seen lots of people complain about that. Feeling 90 years old. <laughs> I got two people that said this and I thought it was so funny. It's a real thing because like I said before, when you are younger and you're not used to having all of these problems, bone aches, joint pain, fatigue, and then you just like go from feeling fine and 25 to feeling horrible and 95, it's, it's a huge difference. So yes. Definitely, definitely notice that one. Those are all the main side effects that I got from people. There's lots of other side effects you can experience. I just said the most common ones. So if you are about to do hormone therapy, just be aware of these things. Um, I assume that's why you're watching this video or you are on hormone therapy and you wanna see how normal your side effects are. Like I said before, some people experience a ton of side effects. Some people experience just a little bit of side effects. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this video answered some of your questions about hormone therapy and gave you a better idea of what it's all about. If you like this video, make sure to check out some of the other ones on my channel and subscribe if you want to support me. Also give this video a thumbs up because it helps with the YouTube algorithm and whatnot. Also, if you're wondering where Gray has gone, He's right over there, but wow. he's also in all the videos on our other channel. We made a couples channel. I will link that in the description. It's also on the screen right now. You should definitely go subscribe and check that out because we will be doing happier, fun videos. And if you like vlogs and stuff like that, you will like this channel. So yeah, that's all. Bye.